Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to Newbrook Workshop. Now, ages ago, I had the large X-carved machine and I built a great big cabinet for it. Uh, but then I swapped that and I got the smaller X-carved machine and so I made a different cabinet. And at that time, I knew we were moving house and I knew the new workshop would, would be a lot smaller. And so I built a cabinet where the X-carve folds away. Now, when I made this cabinet, I made no video about its construction. I made it from all the bits from the old cabinet. And I'm really sorry that I didn't really tell you about it at the time. However, I have got some photographs uh, and some little bits of video which I made ages ago, which I'm going to show you now. Unfortunately, I have no plans, no drawings for this at all. And so you're just going to have to look at this video and try and identify those key points so that you could construct something similar for yourself. Now, the new cabinet for the X-carve has been uh, built out of necessity uh, because there's a chance that we might be moving house in this coming year and uh, there's a, also a chance that my workshop may not be as big and so everything may have to be uh, cut down in size a little bit. Now, my original uh, cabinet for the X-carve was for the a uh, 1000 millimeter machine but now I've got the 750 millimeter machine so it's much smaller so that has given me the opportunity uh, to reuse most of the materials in that original um, cabinet uh, to make uh, this new one let me show you what it's like first of all there's a lid here uh, which comes up and this was the original uh, X-carve uh, logo there I've got a couple of uh, blocks one that goes there and one that goes here and there's a very slight angle it's about five degrees on there so that, that goes in like so so that's keeping that lid safely uh, from falling down and trapping my fingers a couple of pins here and these pins engage in a couple of holes there which uh, helps to make the whole thing a little more rigid now in order to get this front out uh, one lifts it and if I do that I lift it up like so and you may see on the end here there's a, a brass dowel sticking out there and at the bottom here there is a slot and corresponding to the slot there and on the other end there's a pair of dowels sticking out on the left and on the right at the bottom of the cabinet sides and that means then that this will drop into place and it won't fall out uh, when the, everything's packed away. Uh, you also notice perhaps a couple of screw inserts, one here uh, and one here. And there are corresponding holes through the side here that should the whole thing be transported, I can put screws in from the outside to absolutely keep this panel uh, firmly in place. Now, in order to uh, get the mechanism up, there's a handle at the bottom. There are no gas struts with this at all, just a handle at the bottom here. I start pulling it up towards me and when it gets to about this position I've got a pair of spring-loaded stays, one on each side and that will hold it in place just temporarily. Uh, at the moment those stays tend to make the sides bow out a little bit uh, and so one couldn't rely on this for any uh, length of time and I always make sure I've got a hand here just in case. Then there are two ways of getting this in its final position. The first way, if the whole cabinet were screwed to the wall, I've got a, a little plate there and one on this side and through those plates I can put a screw and here's a screw here and I've got uh, those screws now uh, fitted one each side. Now this is not screwed to the wall and of course there's a risk now, certainly as the gantry comes this way, that it could topple over. Now the other way of keeping this upright uh, is uh, to use the front panel. You may see uh, on the floor a piece of wood. It's just pushed against uh, the bottom rail and it's of a particular width. I'm going to get this panel roughly in place, like so. And then I'm going to lift this up and slide this underneath and at any stage I can rest uh, whilst I'm doing this process. I've got a little pencil mark on the side there and on this side here so I know 
where the top of the panel should end up. There it is. That's now in position and the bottom is tucked in and that's now safe to use even when it's not fixed to the wall. And as an added safety feature when you're using this sort of arrangement to support the weight of the platform, on the inside of the platform I've got a stay which comes down and then that will go against the front here and I can put this screw in here and that's now holding the front nicely in place and I've got the same on the other side. Now the working area now is reduced to match the reduced size of the 750X carve. I've put some power sockets here, uh, one is for the router uh, and it's got its name on there and I switch that on and off individually there. One is for the X-Carve itself. I'll use another one for the power supply for my computer which would be attached to all of this when it's working. Uh, that's the, the mains cable that goes to that bank of sockets and it's just loosely held onto that rail with a, uh, a Velcro strap. Now you can see there's quite a lot of uh, carpentry going on around here. Now these pieces, there's one this side, one the other side exactly the same, uh, and there's this, this one here. And these are all designed to hold the gantry and support the weight of the DeWalt router when uh, the X-carve is tilted into the vertical position. Because under no circumstances do we want any strain to be put on uh, the actual mechanism itself. Uh, everything is screwed down onto this platform so it's not going to fall off in any way, shape or form. And I should have mentioned that with the X-Carve cabinet, when it's all folded down and the lid's in place, it's the same height as the standard MFT3 and all of my other workbenches at 900 millimetres. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.